he was in jail. He was he was in in jail in, in Egypt for ten years, and then he asked for the uh, one of the ministers of, of Pharaoh to remember him after solving the dream, uh, the dream of those two ministers, and one of them got killed, uh, got uh, uh, hung up, and the other one, uh, which is Sarah Mashkim, how do you say, uh, Mashkim, Sarah Mashkim. Um, uh, he, Minister of, Minister of uh, oh, Battles, much, much, because he, uh, he went back to his, uh, to get his job back, um, uh, serving uh, Pharaoh, and handing his, uh, the, um, the wine into his hand back, and then he uh, remember after two years, so um, he he remember that um, that there is a slave, which is a Hebrew slave in jail. That he was able to solve dreams, and why he 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 remember that after two years because Pharaoh had a dream, and our parasha telling us. About the dream of Pharaoh, uh, that Vatipaem Rucho, Vemi Ketch Natai Miamim, Vipero Holem Halom, Holem Vine Omeda Layo. He is dreaming, Pharaoh is dreaming that he is standing on the Nile. And the question is first of all, my question is how come when uh, he is later on, when he will take uh, 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 Yosef Atzadik from from jail and bring him uh, to his palace to solve the dream. How come he's not telling him exactly what he was dreaming? He he was telling him that he was standing by nearby the Nile, not standing on the Nile uh, like he dreamed, uh, like he had a dream. Why is it? Why is changing it? Because Pharaoh knew that Yosef. Is a wise man, and he will realize immediately that uh, a person that want to be God had a dream to become God. Uh, he will he is he will think about it during the day, and he will come to to dream about it nighttime. So when by standing on the Nile and walking on the water, he is uh, basically. It's part of his uh, thinking. Why he exactly what he was dreaming? He was he was dreaming to become God, so he's standing on the Nile. That's what he was dreaming, but he he was ashamed to say the truth to Yosef because Yosef he's a wise man and he know how to solve dreams. So he will immediately catch uh, the the dream of Pharaoh and um, he will tell him, okay, that's what you think, and since sin, since you, you, it's your wishes and you want to become God, then uh, you came to dream about it and you stand on the Nile. Um, now, Pharaoh is, is dreaming, he's standing on the Nile, and uh, from the Nile there is seven cows, beautiful, uh, 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 good looking, uh, <coughs> and uh, they're, they're very healthy and uh, and um, they they're standing on uh, on on the Nile, and they're they're rising from the Nile, and then seven other cows, very thin and bad looking, um, standing by them on, on on by the Nile, and and they are swallowing those seven uh, beautiful cows that uh, rise uh, rose from the from the Nile. And uh, the question is, and he didn't know how to solve it. Now, vatipaem rucho, in the alphabet we have the letter taf. And the taf is the last letter of the alphabet. Vatipaem rucho, it's once. Nebuchadnezzar, vatitpaem rucho, two taf in, in, the, in the word vatitpaem. Why is it? And then the Mepharshim is saying, and Rashi is saying, and the Zohar also, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, is saying that Nebuchadnezzar, he had a dream and he dreamt also the solution. 
So that's why there is two taf from the alphabet, vatit pa'em rucho. What's vatit pa'em? Just like a ringing bell. His uh, spirit was shaking. And, um, and, um, uh, and, and basically, the, uh, he, 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 he dreamed the, the, the dream and the solution, and he forgot it. And he was trying always to remember, and he, he was able to remember part of the solution and part of the dream, but, and tried to put it together and couldn't make it. That's Nebuchadnezzar. But Pharaoh have a different vatipa um, with one, the Zohar saying, because he didn't know the solution, he didn't dream about the solution. He dreamed only the dream with no solution. And then he is he he's, uh, sleeping again, and, 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 and again he have a second dream. And his second dream, he dreamed exactly the same principle, seven different uh, shibolim, uh, you see shibolim, you say, wheat, uh, rising from, uh, good-looking, rising from the Nile, and then other uh, seven different wheat, the bad-looking, and they're swallowing the good... Uh, looking uh, um, uh, wait and um, and then he woke up and here it's a and then he realized that it's a dream now he's asking his how to uh, what what's the solution for the dream so he gave them the dream but Nebuchadnezzar in comparison didn't want to give any any information to his wife, uh, consulting pe- people um, he told them, okay, Nebuchadnezzar told them, oh, I would like you to tell me what was the dream and what was the solution, and if not, then I'll kill you. So he started to kill all the wise people of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. And um, till Daniel came, and then Hashem, with Ruach HaKodesh, uh, gave him uh, the the dream and the solution, and he gave Nebuchadnezzar the dream and the solution, and then that's uh, the way uh, the Gzera stopped. Um, the Gzera was to kill all the wise people that couldn't uh, tell him um, what the solution and, and what the what the dream and the solution. But uh, Pharaoh he gave the dream to his Khartoumim. Khartoumim in Hebrew. It's a uh, har to mim. They used to take bones and to get them warm by putting them under their um, uh, chest, chest, and and then after after the the, the bones become uh, become hot, uh, then they start to get to ask the bones some questions and and, and get answers from from the bones, just like lavan. Uh, Rami used to do, but he used to do it with the scale of the eldest son. Uh, but he used to burn it up uh, with, uh, with um, you know, a candle or whatever. So uh, that's a witchcraft that they used to do. So they couldn't tell him exactly the uh, solution. So they gave him many solutions, but not for <coughs> Pharaoh. That's what the Mepharshim is saying. They gave a solution, but not for Pharaoh. He, he, he couldn't accept the solution. Uh, they told him seven daughters. You're you, you're gonna you're gonna have seven daughters, and then uh, you're gonna bear seven daughters, or many other uh, different solutions about houses. And but he couldn't seven houses that you're gonna build and seven houses that you're gonna uh, destroy. But they could they couldn't accept. He couldn't could not accept the solution, and. Uh, and then um, the minister of um, Sarah Mashkim um, remember uh, he remember that uh, there is a slave um, that uh, know how to. Now Rashi is saying even even when he made a, 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 an action of a grace with uh, Yosef Tzadik by telling. Uh, that uh, he he is able capable of uh, solving the dream, but yet he was doing it with um, um, he was with insultment. 
נער, he's a youth, he's a נער, he's a, just, uh, he's not a wise man, uh, he's not the oldest man, he's, and, and he's a slave, he doesn't deserve to become king or something, uh, just a slave. And uh, the Torah is saying, him zchartani v'ishkachtani, it's, it's two different, if, if you, if you, um, 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 uh, The, the Torah is saying that two years he had to wait, Yosef HaTzadik. Why? Because he had a, ch- a faith in, in that minister instead of Hashem. So that was a punishment from Hashem by, by, because he didn't rely uh, on Hashem uh, entirely. That's what he was supposed to do. Um, okay, so then Yosef HaTzadik, uh, is, they took him from, from jail. Uh, he shaved and he brought from... And he, he, they changed his clothing to, uh, to honor the king and Pharaoh. And then he came before Pharaoh. And then Pharaoh is telling him all the, all the, all the dreams. And he, he's telling him, I'm not able, I'm not capable of myself to solve the dream. It's from Hashem. If Hashem is give, will give me the solution, then I'm, I'm going to be able to, to solve the dream. So he was uh, say, uh, modest, mod, m- anav, mod- modest, right? moderate or modest, uh, how do you say? Humble. humble. He was uh, modestly, humble. modestly humble. Yeah, okay, so, uh, and then he told him, Those seven uh, cows that you saw, uh, healthy cows that are good looking, those are the seven years that uh, um, a, um, a lot of uh, you say wealth will be in Egypt and a lot of food um, and um, those are the seven good years that will come. And uh, Hashem, is telling you, um, foretelling you what's going to happen in the future, in the coming future. The Zohar is saying that uh, usually the dreams that people are getting, they're getting it according to their spiritual level, but not the king, because the king has a responsibility over the nation. So despite the fact that he himself has a, a less madrega, a less... Uh, level of spirituality, but he's being, as Hashem usually give those people, foretelling them uh, what he's about to do by, through dreams. So that's what, uh, what uh, Yosef is telling Pharaoh. Hashem is telling, foretelling you uh, what's coming. And then right after the seven uh, good years, wealthy years with a lot of prosperity in Egypt, uh, with a lot of food, Then will come the seven bad years that starvation will take place. And um, therefore, I'm offering you uh, what to do. I'm suggesting what to do. Take a wise man that is uh, going to be able to gather food in the good seven years for the years of starvation. And then the response of Pharaoh was, okay. Um, he was telling to his, to his uh, servants, there, we didn't see um, he, here in Egypt a wise man like you, able to solve uh, 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 dreams and the, the spirit of, Hash, of, of, of Elohim uh, with you. So uh, you are the right man. And what we see according to the, to, to the inner realm, according to the mysticism, that basically the same thing that happened with Yosef in Egypt, the same thing that happened with Mordechai Yehudi. With Mordechai Yehudi in um, Shushan Abira. Um, he, Pharaoh is uh, giving him his ring and he putting um, uh, a, 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 a king clothing on him and taking him with the chariot all over Egypt and saying before him and calling before him Avrech, uh, uh, like uh, um, uh, a person that have authority, that no, no one in Egypt will r- raise his feet and his hand without Joseph. 
It's the same thing happened with Mordechai Yehudi that when Haman Arasha uh, uh, was taking him, um, not with a chariot, but uh, on a horse, and, and saying, uh, And he uh, got the, the clothing of the king, and the crown, and the, and the, and the uh, clothing of the king, and the, uh, he, uh, it was like an advertise before the people that he is the chosen person before the king. Um, why? Because Mordechai Yehudi was from, from a Benjamin tribe, which is, um, again, a, a, a son of Rachel Imenu, a brother of Yosef HaTzadik. Is a, like a Mashiach ben Yosef, is a, the Messiah son of Joseph. Um, in, in, in saying, uh, that's why there is a, um, um, let's say a Hakbalah, um, a comparison between Mordechai Yehudi and Yosef HaTzadik. The same uh, thing happened with, with uh, both. And then Yosef HaTzadik became a king and a ruler. Uh, and now Paro is saying to him, look, um, we are equal. I'm just going to be with my chair a little more than you, but it's only a chair, but you have, you, you're, you're going to control the, the country uh, uh, just like me, but uh, I'm just going to be a little more. The people will honor me more because I'm going to have um, uh, a chair. With my chair, I'm going to be higher than your chair. That's it. But the, the point is that Chazal is telling us that in Egypt, there was a rule that a person become a king according to the numbers of languages that he is able to speak. And since a, a pharaoh used to speak seven languages, different, uh, 70 uh, different languages, so he became a king. But Joseph knew 71 languages because pharaoh didn't know to speak Hebrew. So he was supposed to be with a higher level and a higher chair over and, and, and the king and the ruler of Egypt. But uh, Pharaoh uh, kept that to himself. Uh, but he knew that Yosef Tzadik is over him. And then Yosef Tzadik is gathering food during those seven good years. Um, and, um, and they're keeping it to a point where they couldn't even count it no more. There, there is so much food, that they couldn't count, count uh, 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 the food that they kept. And uh, after those seven years, um, or just to read it for you, um, what happened with Yosef HaTzadik, like I told you, the comparison with Mordechai Yehudi, then the Torah is saying, Vayomer paro el Yosef, and the Pharaoh, uh, Paro is, was saying to Yosef, Look, I put you over all the country of Egypt. And he, he took his ring and he put it uh, on uh, Yosef's hand and he uh, dressed him with uh, Big Day Shesh, which is the kingdom uh, um, uh, clothing. And he put Ravid, which is a, um, um, say, uh, a chain, chain with a lot of rings. They call it Ravid, a lot of gold ring. And, um, and he put him on a, a chariot and he took him uh, of, over Egypt, all over the place. And they, they were calling before him Avrech, Avrech, which is a... Um, a chosen um, ruler um, by the king. Um, and, and then he told him, and then Pharaoh is telling to Yosef, without you, no one will raise his hand or his feet all over the, the land of Egypt. You're the ruler, the ultimate ruler. And then he called him Tsofnat Paneach, which is uh, uh, revealing secrets, and being able to... to to figure out secrets. Uh, and then he gave him Osnat Bat Potifera, and then Osnat was the daughter of Dina, and um, from Shechem. If uh, we remember the story of Shechem, 
when Shechem, the son of Hamor, he took Dina uh, to his palace and he had a, uh, a, a child with her. And the child was Osnat. Uh, so she was a Jew because of her, of her mother. But since uh, it was a shame for uh, Yaakov, you know, so he put, uh, he put a, a note on her neck, uh, on a chain with a, with a note, uh, that she is a son of Jacob. And then he sent her. And she came to Egypt. And Hashem made it in order for Yosef to have a wife. Uh, so that's that's how uh, and 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 she become she's not a, a, a daughter of a, of a Potipera, but she is she was a, an adapted daughter of a Potipera. So therefore, um, when Yosef took her to a wife, she basically was the son uh, the, the daughter of Dina. Okay and. Um, Yosef, when he stood before Pharaoh, he was, at the, he was the, at the age of 30. 12 years in jail and one year in, uh, um, uh, um, in, um, in the, uh, he was in Sarat uh, uh, um, which is Sarat Abachim, that what if Pharaoh can, Sarat Abachim. And then, uh, after they gather so much, so much uh, during those seven, seven years, during those seven years of wealth and prosperity, he had two, two sons, Menashe and Ephraim. And uh, right after then, uh, there was a starvation all over the Middle East, all over the world, basically. That's what the Torah is saying. And then uh, Yaakov Avinu was telling to his children uh, why, uh, why, okay, um, he saw that there is a food in Egypt by the spirit, by Hashem was revealing to him, by Aspaklaria Meira, that's what the, the Rashi is saying. Uh, and then he told, told his son, Lama Titrao, why, why would you look to the Ismailite and the Edomite like if you have a food and you don't care about food when there is a starvation all over? Why uh, to look like you have a lot and you don't care much about the future? Uh, go and uh, bring some food from Egypt. So uh, you know, the people around, around you, like the Ismailite Isma, Isma, Isma and, and the Edomite, you will not suspect you that you have already uh, uh, too much and you, you don't care about when, when the food that you have will end. Um, I heard that there is food in Egypt, so go and, and bring some food from Egypt. Uh, and we're going to live and not die. That's what he was telling them. So then the ten tribes not Benjamin. Benjamin was staying with his father and the Torah is saying to us that when, when they came to Egypt, they entered to Egypt to, it's not in the Torah, that on the Farshim is saying to us that they enter from each one of them of the, from a different gate. Why? Because they were searching for Joseph, for the brother, and they made up their mind that they are they're willing to purchase him no matter for how much money they want to, to take him, but they were searching for a slave. They didn't, under, they didn't expect him to, to be in the palace or to become a king or, a, uh, or, or, or vice president or whatever. They thought that he is a slave somewhere, so they start to search for him. And... Um, and then they came before uh, Yosef, and Yosef knew them. He recognized them because when he left them, they were with a beard, and he was not. He was 17. So uh, he recognized them, but they couldn't recognize him. But the Torah, the Mufarshim saying, recognize, he recognized them to have mercy on, their, on, on them as brothers, but they couldn't recognize him as a brother. 
Um, so they stood before him and he started to remember the dreams that he had. And, uh, uh, and then he, he told them, he started to speak with them roughly. He told them that he's suspecting them as uh, spies. And they, say, and they start to, to protect themselves and to say, no, 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 we are brothers. We are brothers. We even, we even have uh, another, another brother, and, uh, and, 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 and some, uh, we have another brother. That we enter from uh, different gates because we're searching for something. We're searching not for the secret of the country, how to conquer the country like you think. No, we, we are searching for our brother. We have another brother that we lost a uh, long time ago. And uh, we suspect that he's a slave here in Egypt. And then Yosef, according to the Mepharshim, was asking them, okay, what if you're going to find him and they will not be willing to uh, sell your brother for any amount of money that you're going to offer? What are you going to do? So they, they told they told Joseph, we are willing to fight, we're willing to kill, and we're willing to die. So that's what, then he told them, you see, that's what I suspected. You are a spies. And, uh, and then he took them for three days. He put them on the jail for three days. And then he told them, look, I'm going to release one of you uh, to go to uh, Knanite and then uh, to bring your uh, other brother uh, to here, that's going to be a proof that you're really brothers and you're really, this is your story, it's not a cover story, but it's a, it's a real story. And, um, and then they were there for three days and right after, Yosef at Sadiq is telling them, okay, look, I'm, I'm, uh, I have a faith and I'm, I'm worried from Hashem and I have Yirat Shamaim. And uh, therefore, you know what they're going to do? They're going to do the opposite. They're going to take one of you, one of you put him on, on jail here. They're going to hold him here. And I'll release you uh, to go with food to your families, to Knanite, to your father, that you told me that you have a father. You know, when, when uh, they, when he spoke with them and they told him, uh, that we are not spies, we are, we are brothers, we are family, we have a, we have a father, an uh, old father, so you ask, uh, is your father alive? And they say, uh, yes, and Hashalom uh, lo is in peace, um, yes, and, um, and then uh, what about your, your, your young son, uh, uh, your young brother, uh, young brother, and then uh, uh, they told him, yes, so, so he, the, those questions, you're going to see uh, later on that uh, they, they made Yaakov Avinu suspicious. Um, he realized that probably, probably Yosef is alive. Uh, if he's asking such a questions, it's a weird question to ask. So he, Judah is going to tell him, gonna tell him when, when he will go back. Um, well, well, first of all, Yosef released them. And he took Shimon and he put him in jail. Now Shimon resists to, to go in jail. And uh, he started to, to resist. And then Menashe, the son of Joseph, gave him a, um, a heat. And uh, he, he was in shock because the, the, the tribes were very, very strong. And they, they could even turn over Egypt. They were very uh, strong uh, people. And he realized that the, the heat that he gave him, it's from the tribe. But he didn't understand. He was in shock. And he was able, Menashe was able to put Shimon in jail. And then, uh, why, why Joseph have done it? Because he, he, was suspect, he suspected Levi and Shimon, when they gathered together, they, or, they, they killed Shem. And he knew it. So he suspected that if he will release Shimon, then, then Shimon, that 
took him and put him into uh, um, a bow. So the, uh, in the beginning, when he, when he was sold, uh, to uh, when Joseph was sold, uh, so he put him in, in a not in a well in a in a pit, in a pit. So um, who was the one that put him in the pit? It was Shimon that put him in the pit? And he knew that Shimon and Levi was the one that when they get, gather together, they can kill the entire city, the entire country. So he wanted to separate them. Uh, so, and then they, they went to ten tribe, the, the nine tribes left back to Egypt. And uh, Shimon uh, was in jail, uh, was holding jail as a, you know. Um, and then uh, when they came to, to the house of Jacob in, in Canaanite, then they took their bag, they took the food, and they, they realized that all the money they were supposed to pay to Egypt to purchase the food were inside the bag, and they start to they start to worry, and they told the Jacob all what happened with them, and all the and how uh, this man, uh, this uh, ruler, spoke with them roughly, and he took Shimon, he put him in in in, in jail, uh, and then and then he start Jacob start to to cry, he told him, what 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 are you gonna do? Are you gonna die with Joseph? Uh, Joseph uh, uh, was killed by an animal. Uh, 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 now, uh, you want to take Benjamin? They, they told him that if, if they, the, these men told them that if you're not going to bring your, your, uh, uh, your um, young brother Benjamin, don't come. Don't come because that's the proof that you're brothers. Uh, why just... Joseph, uh, uh, allow yourself aside, why, why Joseph made such a thing? He was to, he want to check whether the brothers made a tshuva. If uh, Yosef had a plan, he had a plan that if, if uh, Binyamin will come, and, and then he, he, will, he will put the grail in his bag, his grail in his bag, and and then he's gonna chase the brothers after after leaving Egypt. The 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 he's gonna send Menashe, his son, after them. And he ask he's gonna ask them, why did you stole my grail, my my silver grail? You know that I'm a I'm a, I'm a I, it's it's I'm, I'm doing witchcraft by by that grail, silver grail, and. Uh, uh, and you know, you know that I, I'm gonna guess that you 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 did you stole it. So he he had a plan to see if the other brothers are gonna leave Benjamin to become a slave in Egypt, and then he will take him and depart himself from the family and save Benjamin, his brother, from his mother Rachel. Or um, if they're going to fight for Benjamin and do a tshuva for selling him, if they're going to sell his b brother Benjamin. From, you know, so they probably have uh, something against the children of Rachel, so, uh, of Rachel Imenu. Uh, so they're going to harm Benjamin as well. So he had a plan from the beginning to bring the young, to, to tell them to, that it's a conditional, that you're going to bring your young uh, uh, brother to Egypt. And if you're gonna do that, then I'll know that you, you're really family. Uh, but the plan was to bring the young, son, young, young brother of him from Rachel, uh, the mother of Rachel, and to uh, and see whether, whether he can reveal himself to his brothers because they re repent and made a tshuva or not by checking them. So that's what, what happened. But, but then uh, Reuven, uh, when, when the ten, nine tribes was in, 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 in Canaanite, in, in the house of Jacob, and they told him, look, the ruler told us not to come back to Egypt no more. And uh, Shimon is there in jail, and he, uh, he will not release him unless we're going to bring Benjamin. 
So he told them, why did you tell him? Why did you tell him that you have a young brother? Why did you tell him? And then Judah jumped and said, he was telling him, look, father, he was asking us if we have a father. He was asking us if, if, if our father are alive. He was asking us if we have brother, a, a young brother. So we respond accordingly. So then that's the point where Jacob start to understand that probably Joseph is alive and the ruler probably he sound like he knows something. So when he sent them back to Egypt with Benjamin, he didn't send them with Ruven. Ruven was telling his father, look, father, I'm going, to resp I'm, I'm going to take responsibility over Benjamin. If I'm not going to bring you, bring Benjamin before you uh, back from Egypt, then kill my two sons. So the Mepharshim is saying that he's a stupid, stupid other son. Why? Because, uh, because uh, his father is more, more over, uh, uh, more over Joseph and over Shimon that is not here, and now, uh, and, and Benjamin that you're going to take, and he will not come, and then you want me to kill your t my, my two uh, uh, grandson, stupid uh, old uh, um, um, uh, eldest son, uh, Reuven. So he didn't want to give uh, Benjamin to Reuven. He thought that he's unresponsible. But then Judah was saying, look, father, we don't have food no more. You want us to die? What do you want us to do? You don't, if you don't release Benjamin, then we're going to die. We're going to all die. I'm going to take responsibility. I'm going to bring it before you. And if I'm not going to bring it before you, I'm taking responsibility that I'm going to lose this life and heaven life. The two worlds. So um, Yaakov knew that Judah is a ruler. He's a lion. He is the king of the, of the, of the tribes. And he knew that he's, he can fight Egypt. On his own, he, he knew that he knew that he's very strong, and he, if he if he's committed, then he will Moser nefesh for Benjamin. So he sent it with the responsibility of Judah, because he didn't he didn't have any any other uh, uh, option. So when they went back to Egypt, and they suspected that uh, probably you know they're going to catch them because they found the money in their bag, the money that they, they were supposed to pay for the food that they took from Egypt. So they went to, uh, they told them that they're going to eat with the ruler, with Joseph, uh, in his palace. So they went to um, the, the guard that was standing right before the palace, which was Menashe. And they told him, look, uh, we, we don't know what happened here. Uh, we took the food, we pay for, for, for the food, and then something, a mistake happened here. And unfortunately, we found the money in our bag. So here is the money, and we bought some other money to purchase some more food. And he told them, no, no, don't worry. Uh, probably uh, we, we got the money. We got the money already. It's your uh, God that gave, uh, gave you uh, a treasure. I see that uh, something happened here. Um, like that? Uh, computer. Uh, he's better. Uh, is it not tech? Uh, Hold on. Co uh, connecting. Okay, so hopefully. Yeah. I'm, I'll go on with the, with the lecture. Unfortunately, we're having some problems here, uh, technical problems. Okay, when, when, the, when they met uh, the guard, which is uh, Menashe, the son of, uh, of, of uh, Yosef at Sadiq, and uh, he told them, your God gave you a treasure. He gave you, uh, I, I, I got the money. I already got the money. 
So, uh, but tonight, but today you, you're going to eat with, uh, with the ruler, with, uh, with uh, Yosef. So they, they were waiting for him till noon. And then when he came, um, then uh, he uh, set them. He was like looking at his grail, uh, uh, silver grail, and like pretending that he's a witchcraft, you know, and uh, telling, telling them to sit in, in an order, like the Oven, the old one, will sit here, and then the second, Oven, Shimon, Levi, after, of course, releasing Shimon, and uh, um, he put them in order, and they was, were amazed, because they, they, they were asking themselves, how does he know? They didn't realize that he is a Yosef a Tzaddik. And then, uh, when when he saw uh, Binyamin, he he asked to go and to, behind the veil to, to another room to to cry because it was you know very emotional. Uh, and then the midrash is saying that he took Binyamin and he. Show him a map. I told him, you know, I can tell you where is your brother. And he was showing him the map of Egypt. But it's a kind of a map that, that uh, was kind of a miraculous uh, map in a, in a way. But, and then he was showing him the same place that they were standing. And... Um, um, he told him, you know, your brother must be here, right here, and that he was pointing on the, on, on the palace and the, of, of Yosef at Tzadik where they stood. He was giving him a clue. And then when they sat together and uh, uh, after eating with him, with, with the ruler, and uh, uh, he gave them some presents, and, and the present of, of uh, Benjamin was five times more than uh, the other brothers, and then he told Menashe, his servant, or his son, to, uh, uh, to put uh, the, uh, the uh, silver grail. They, 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 purchased, like, they purchased food again because they have to go back to Canaanite. But what they, do, what they did, he told, them, he told Menashe to put the money back again in their bags. And to put the the silver grail uh, in um, under under the bag of uh, of Benjamin, and then when they left Egypt, they already start to head toward Canaanite. And then he sent Menashe, his son, to chase them. And then when he reach was able to reach them and and uh, he caught them in their way, he asked them why, you know, my my king asked me to ask you, why have you done that? Why did you take my holy grail, my, uh, my, my, my uh, silver grail that, I'm, that I'm, I'm doing witchcraft with that? Didn't you know that I'm a witch, that I know, that I can guess, uh, that you uh, stole it? And then they told, them, they told him, no, 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 we didn't steal. We even brought money. The, the money that we found in our uh, bags when, when we first left to Canaanite, and we thought that it's a, it's a mistake, and we brought the money, we brought some more money, so we're, we're reliable people. We didn't take your, your, your silver grail uh, of your master. Uh, uh, then, uh, then he told them, okay, and then they told him, whomever you're going to find... Uh, uh, the grail with uh, we're going to be slave we're going all of us going to be slave to you uh, so uh, he started to search for the grail from Reuven now he knew that he's by the the old the, the young son which is Benjamin, Benjamin but he, he did it on a purpose so they took uh, all the bags from you know their donkeys and they start to open it up and to show him that it's uh, that they're clean people, and then when he reached Benjamin and he found uh, the Grail there, then uh, they start to they were so upset, they were so 
uh, embarrassed, so they start to, the Midrash is saying, that they start to scream on Benjamin to tell him, you are a thief just like your mother. Your mother stole from her father, Lavan, the idols, and you, you have it in, in your, in, in your uh, it's, it's, it's like a, a genetic uh, uh, um, behavior that you, you inherit from your, mo your mother. That, uh, that you also uh, a thief, that you stole the uh, uh, witchcraft, the, 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 this uh, ruler, you stole him, you stole the, uh, uh, the, the, the relatives uh, doing witchcraft with that. So they went back to Egypt. And when they went back to Egypt, they um, you know, start to apologize before Yosef, and he told them how uh, how, how you've done such a thing, I was, you know, uh, very graceful for you, to, with, I treat you, you, you ate with me, and, you, you know, I treat you well. And uh, they, 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 they didn't know how to apologize. But then they say, okay, we are all going to be slave to you. And then Yosef say, no, I'm a righteous man. I don't need you to be slave of, of mine, my, my servant of, of mine. I'm going to take just Benjamin, that, he, that, that stole the, uh, just the, the son that stole uh, my, my silver grail. And uh, you're going to go back to your father. That's the end of the parasha. But the point is that the, the, the plan was to see what's going to be the reaction from now on. Are they going to fight over Benjamin or going to give up on him just like they give up, gave up on him? And, and if so, then he will save his brother from them. Now, the, the Rashi is saying, and the Midrash is saying, that he, he asked Benjamin, how many, uh, do you have sons, uh, children? And he told him, yes, I have 10. And then he asked him uh, for the name of uh, the, his son. And then, and then he started he start to tell him, Mupim vechupim. All the names that he gave to his, to his children was about the tragedy, to remember the tragedy of his, uh, his uh, eldest brother from Rachel Limenu, uh, uh, just to remember that. And so um, that's what Rashi is, is talking about, the names and giving and the explanation why he gave such a name to, uh, to his uh, ten to tell, tell, tell 10 children. So the point is that Yosef was supposed to have um, 12 tribes of his own. And, um, but because uh, he had um, the uh, temptation of Eshet uh, Potiphar, um, the, 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 the wife of Potiphar, and um, he um, didn't commit a, commit a, the, the crime, but anyways, he, he was not seduced. But but since the the Mekubalim is saying that uh, he, he had to hold himself so much that from his ten fingers, uh, then came you know the sperm came from out, out of his ten fingers. So therefore, then he lost the ten righteous um, uh, children that he was supposed to have that will um, be a nation of, of his own from, from him. Uh, now, that's, that's a parasha. Parasha speaking about Yosef, Yosef at Tzadik, and, and talking about uh, um, also when, when Benjam, Benjamin and, uh, uh, and Yosef, uh, when they met one another and they cried over you know, one another, so... Um, they they cry Benjamin cry because you know they were so spiritual and so righteous and they they, they had a, the Ruach uh, Kodesh so they were not crying like us you know emotionally um, for not seeing one another but they were crying because they knew something uh, so Benjamin was was crying about the um, Mishkan. That will be destroyed by uh, later on in the in the in the field of 
the land that's supposed to uh, Joseph to inherit in Eretz Israel, and uh, and Yosef uh, um, was crying over him. Uh, was crying for the two temples that will be destroyed in the land of Benjamin. That's what Rashi is saying, according to the Midrash. And, um, and that's what it is. Now, the Zohar is saying that the plan of Hashem is to bring the nation to Egypt. Why is it? Because to fix the ancient, ancient sin of, of uh, uh, Tree of Knowledge and uh, the ancient sin of Adam and Chava. Uh, that all the sparks, uh, the, ho- the holy sparks from Adam Rishon, uh, went down to Egypt, to the filthy place of, of er- on, on, on the face of the earth, which is Egypt. And to take, to grab out the holy spark and to, uh, uh, to fix the ancient sin, uh, which is the, uh, the ancient sin of the tree of knowledge, they were supposed to go back to Egypt. And Jacob was supposed to go as a slave with a lot of uh, suffer to Egypt. But since our uh, Hashem loved Abraham and Isaac and, 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 and Jacob, so he made it, he made a plan how he will go to Egypt like a king because he was re- well respected when Jacob will finally will go to Egypt his son is a king in Egypt, and he was considered as a, a owner of the kingdom of Egypt. And um, why, why was that? It was a plan of Hashem to uh, solve uh, uh, sorrow from, from Jacob because he loved our forefathers. I thank you for listening, and if you have any questions, and I'm willing to... Okay. So Shabbat Shalom and thank you for listening.